respected elder brothers and sisters, and particularly my mother ji. <laughs> I always describe her as my mother ji. Yeah. Because I think a selfish reason, she very much praising me. So I call her my mother ji. <laughs> And then, here, uh, number of my long-time friend, uh, uh, I can't remember, you see, the, each person's name, but their face, you see, very much because of, printed, no. printed in my mind very clearly. So, as soon as I met these people, so I immediately noticed so how much change in their face because of age. Then, it is some of my old friends, so when I met their face, uh, looks uh, very old, then I must sort of, sort of remind myself, I also now become old. But important is one's life should be meaningful. So we all, Buddhists call, you see, we all have the Buddha nature. So uh, on that basis, you see, uh, firstly, you yourself practice in order to um, so they materialize or strengthening the Buddha nature, Tadagata Garva. For that, uh, main practice is understanding about reality, ultimate reality. That's quite similar, quantum physics. Quantum physics is very helpful. So daily my practice or meditation about Shunyata, I also, you see, combine uh, some of the quantum physicists to their view. They say this big sort of uh, gap, appearances and reality. So that's exactly now Nagarjuna's theory as well as Arya Asanka's theory clearly mentioned big differences, appearance and reality. Because most of destructive emotion very much based on appearances. So the antidote uh, of that to know the reality. So uh, uh, then there's one, another is altruism. Altruism, whether Buddhist or non-Buddhist, whether believer or non-believer, even animal, those animal who have more, uh, or should they, uh, compassionate sort of mind, that then these people, these animals, much happier, like dog, you see, more compassionate attitude, then many dogs surrounded. Uh, some dogs always barking, and then they become lonely. <laughs> so, uh, and then we human beings, the social animal, now some scientists also say basic human nature because we are social animal, so basic our nature is more compassionate. That's what our scientists say. So the teaching or essence of all major world tradition carry same message, message of love. Uh, and for that, 
use different sort of philosophical views. So all major religious tradition since is carry same message. Therefore, the uh, all major religious tradition uh, should have sort of uh, kasa, ka, uh, live harmoniously uh, with mutual respect. So religious uh, harmony very important. So now the what is the whether you call ethics or in any way the our very existence is very much based on the uh, rest of our community. So now today of course the the memory about uh, the Radha Krishna. Nineteen fifty six I came India on Buddha Jandi celebration. Uh, that government of India organized and the chairman of the uh, committee was Radhakrishna. So I feel I always used to telling Indian now India should have the sort of city study more about ancient Indian knowledge. Now, modern Indian, uh, some extent, I think modern Indian, too much sort of, what's the, uh, too much sort of follow materialistic life with materialistic education. So, modern India should pay more attention about ancient Indian knowledge how to tackle our emotion. So over 3,000 year old India's tradition, ahimsa, karuna, these related with our mind, our emotion. So India uh, have the opportunity uh, and ability to combine modern education and ancient Indian knowledge how to tackle our emotion. So Radha Krishna, I think one example, he thoroughly educated modern Western educa education, become some professors or something. I think Oxford University. Uh, in the meantime, you see, he learned ancient Indian uh, knowledge. So some occasion, uh, when, uh, when we together, you see, he recite uh, some Sanskrit shaloka verses with certain sort of tune. Really wonderful. But meantime, uh, if may I say so, is when Radha Krishna recite some uh, Madhim Begamulakarikas, some verses, and he in Sanskrit, he sort of recite. And I felt, oh, the meaning, maybe I know better. <laughs> <laughs> we study many years. Uh, so, uh, so that's uh, in a way disgrace. <laughs> what we respect. Admire, you see, his Sanskrit sort of recitation, Madhimika Mulukarika. But one way I felt, oh, the meaning, we study many years and practice daily. Therefore, we know even better. <laughs> so, here, one example combination, modern education and ancient Indian knowledge. Now basically, Indian knowledge, over 3,000 years, Ahimsa and Karuna, already there. And that also not through prayer, but Vipassana. That means analytical meditation, analyze. So that's, I think, 
something very unique and very, very important. Now, these Ahimsa and Karuna, today's world really need, you see, uh, these two things without Karuna. And then often violence come. So, the previous century, First World War, Second World War, even before that, in the European continent, a lot of sort of fighting. Now, today, still uh, fighting, killing. And the worst thing is, in the very name of religion, like Shia and Sunni, or in Burma, Buddhist, Muslim, and Egypt, Muslim, Christian, like that, is it? very name of religion, you see, killing each other. Unthinkable. As I mentioned earlier, all religion carry same message, message of love. So therefore, uh, we really need India's tradition, ahimsa, uh, with, combined with karuna, not only just prayer, karuna. So my commitment, you see, try to uh, make contribution as much as I can to enter humanity on the basis of uh, as a concept of oneness of seven billion human beings. Each of a human being want happy life. Uh, I don't know what sort of suffering or, or unhappiness or uh, mental, mental sort of disturbances. So these, you see, the antidote of these destructive emotion from birth, we already have the sort of a potential there. As I mentioned earlier, human nature, more compassionate. So therefore, we pay, now question is, pay more attention this inner uh, value more like uh, compassion. Uh, compassion automatically bring uh, also the forgiveness, tolerance, these things come. And the real sort of compassion is, you see, towards troublemaker, or so-called your enemy, genuine sense of concern of their well-being, that's genuine compassion. Towards our friend, uh, uh, some sort of sense of concern or their well-being is more or less attachment. So genuine compassion uh, without attachment. So therefore, they, towards your enemy, uh, genuine, they also human being, human brothers, sisters, they also have a right to be happy person. So yet, because of their fear or because of their anger or jealousy, create some problem. So uh, you should, or so the instead of feeling anger, feeling sense of concern, uh, they also want a happy life, peaceful mind, but they you see too much negative attitude towards me. So therefore, you should develop more sense of concern of these troublemaker. So as Shadadeva say, the, uh, your enemy is best teacher. It's very true, very true. So that, again, India's tradition, secular way, uh, make distinction, um, sort of faith and secular thing. Whether believer or non-believer, I believe this or that, as a, as a secondary because of the question, right? Or important is we are human beings. We should have the, the sense of one community and then uh, develop a sense of concern of entire seven billion human beings. Uh, so my number one commitment is try to promote these things. 
So 1960, uh, 59, I reached Mussoorie, one year, remained there. Then 60, I came here. Government of India arranged this place. Then the late Avapant, uh, is a great friend since 56. So he once he told me in Saw Ashram, one room, seeing the uh, plane, uh, he told, he expressed to me, oh, now from this place, your sort of light can reach uh, wider place, uh, wider area, wider area. Uh, at that time, I felt, oh, it's just the expression. But it seems now, 60 years passed, now a number of people really showing me this is loving kindness and scholars, religious leaders, scientists, many, uh, you see, they are showing interest about my thinking. And is it the Buddhist philosophy? I consider academic subject, not a religious subject. So, number of scientists also now showing interest about, you see, like Buddhist uh, samupand interdependency. Uh, so these things, uh, and as far as external thing is concerned, the scientist highly developed. But internal thing, uh, science, modern science, not yet reach, not yet develop, special paying attention. Uh, even you see, early part of the 20th century, uh, scientists, special brain specialists, they do not accept beside brain something, so I said like mind or chit, they uh, never sort of they pay attention. Everything, only brain. Now, later part of the 20th century, uh, number of scientists now paying interest or accept there is something which affects our brain. That's our mind chip. So, so now, uh, some scientists now begin to carry some research work. Uh, for example, people who meditate during that period, it's just some examination about what situation about their brain and what's changing. And then, uh, at the time of death, it's some people, it's after clinically dead, but body remain very fresh. Sometimes three weeks, two weeks. So, uh, the Moscow University, is some scientists, uh, they pay more attention. So they, uh, they establish one uh, sort of place in Bangalore. Whenever some people in that area, mainly monk, who after death, clinically after death, still body remain fresh, so they already carry some project to examine. So, and also like Wisconsin, the university's uh, brain specialist, Kasa, Richard Dippinson, uh, since many years, he examined. So now these people accept, you see, beside brain, there is something is which really affect our brain, and that is something, you see, more or less separate, independence from this brain. So, so this ancient Indian knowledge, I consider academic subject about, uh, also the peace of mind, also very relevant for a healthy body. 
So, therefore, you know, the other day I met uh, the local, I think, Himajal police. See, he told me some sort of problem in this state, drug problem. Uh, so these are lack of knowledge how to bring peaceful mind. So they simply relying taking uh, what's it, drugs. Uh, drugs. Mm. So this clearly indication, uh, clear indication. In school, not as a religion, but as a sort of academic subject to bring inner peace through that way, uh, healthy body and also longevity. So I think India, you already have the potential. Now pay more attention about ancient Indian knowledge. So Radha Krishna, one example. Uh, so I really very much sort of honor to participate to this function. I am not, not going to say much. I think sun. <laughs> I think many audi audience, you see, find some difficulties about too much sun. Okay, so I will stop. Thank you. Thank you, Your Holiness. Some we have yes. lots of questions for yes. you. Yes, as a question. Uh, uh, yes, written question yes. or direct question. After also, after uh, these, then some direct questions. Oh yes, okay. yes. Uh, so, Your Holiness... A question and also argument. <laughs> then I want to show you, uh, as a student of a Nalanda tradition, and we very much sort of study about logic. So, if you raise some uh, controversial thing or argument, uh, then you will know my brain. So before the argumentative Indians, Your Holiness, okay. I want to start with, the, with a question from one of the youngest members of our audience, Denzin Passel. Uh, I think only five years old, and the question is, Your Holiness, how can we stop all the factories producing plastics? And what advice can you give to children to protect animals of planet Earth? Animal. Now it is quite uh, one way, quite serious global warming, uh, and one way quite sort of encouraging. Many young people, many students now really showing genuine concern under the Swedish girl. No. What the Swedish girl? Wonderful, really wonderful. So young people seem to be more open mind. Oh. So old people sometimes everything fixed here. <laughs> yeah. So it is quite serious. Uh, but still, you see, we need more awareness. Oh. Paper or oh, like that, and I think a newspaper uh, also you see have the responsibility to educate people, not just you see, controversial news. Beside that, some articles about you see the the serious matter, then the newspaper or, or radio. I think have very good opportunity to educate people, public. Hmm? And about animals, Your Holiness. The question yes. was about protecting animals. Ahimsa, oh, India's tradition, India's vegetarian food, wonderful, wonderful. But in the meantime, in the name of uh, economy sort of development, looks, when I'm flying, it seems some poultry 
Poultry. Poultry. You see, more house poultry. So you see people. And then on road, we can see some chicken. So now, India, in the name of more development, or uh, you see, more meat eater, I think people should pay more attention. Thousand year old Indian tradition of vegetarianism. Non vegetarian, I think Chinese food is much better. But vegetarian food, Indian food is much better than Chinese. Uh, China, uh, almost none non vegetarian, f delicious food. Thank you, Your Holiness. The second question is also about children. The question is uh, from Professor Neera Bhalla Sareen, I think. Uh, the question is, my greatest regards to His Holiness, to whom I bow down. I want to ask how to inculcate ethical values in children from 6 to 16 years. 6 to 16. Basically, you see, as science, scientists say, basic human nature is more compassionate. So, very young age, I think they really love this smile, affection. Without that, they can't survive. And as soon as we're born, mother, you see, show up, mother take full responsibility or uh, with sense of infinite or say they compassionate sort of taking care. Without that, we can't survive. So our life starts that way. So young children, I think they also, you see, I think very fresh about, you see, the a compassionate attitude, one another, play together. I often used to mentioning, one time in pathology in Switzerland, uh, also different, I mean, home, different nations, Palestine home and the Jewish home are side by side. It's no problem. They play together. So the problem is once these children join education, in education, now not much pay attention about basic human value, which in child's mind very much fresh. Fresh. Oh, then. You see, in education field, you see, now they make emphasis, I mean, educate people, children, different religion, different nationality, are these things. So I, feel I have some critical view about existing our education system, which very much oriented about material value. Are that not adequate? Oh, uh, to teach children about our inner value. So they are from birth, the inner value very much alive. But once you join education, no longer talking about these things. So in education, uh, should uh, include education about warm heartedness. And now plenty of reasons about scientific finding. So we have a lot of reasons to educate people. The warm-heartedness uh, not only bring peace of mind, but also, you see, uh, healthy, the health, what's the healthy body, like that. So that India have the ability, not something learn learn new from outside, but just to revive ancient Indian knowledge, ahimsa and karuna. Okay. This question, Your Holiness, is also about teaching. Hmm? Uh, the question is, as a teacher who teaches professional ethics and human values to engineering students, how can I motivate and convince them to transfer the theoretical knowledge into practice? We already start some program at Dharmasala with as a cooperation, full cooperation with uh, government college there. So we already uh, have some sort of what's it, program, teachers training. 
So now, eventually, I think all India, uh, I think, should include this in these uh, teachers' training, especially to pay attention about our emotion. And usually I describe map of emotion. These are your own traditional knowledge, not something new. So only revival of this knowledge. Uh, Your Holiness, this question is about the gap between the master and the follower. It's from Dr. Mohinder Singh. He says, how do we bridge the growing gap between the teachings of the master and the practices of the followers? The gap between the master and the disciple or the follower. The follower themselves uh, should pay more attention for study. <laughs> These days, as far as Buddhism is concerned, I'm telling people, we Buddhist should be 21st century Buddhist, not just faith. Not that way. You see, study. What is the meaning of Buddha? What is the meaning of Dharma? For that, the Four Noble Truth, in order to uh, know Four Noble Truth thoroughly, uh, you need knowledge about true truth, ultimate truth in Kasa. Ultimate truth and the conventional truth. Like that. So, see, Buddhists, particularly in Narendra tradition, you see, the, each point should examine, not faith. Buddha himself is expressed to us, oh, my follower, monks, scholars should not accept my teaching out of faith, but rather thorough investigation and experiment. That's very scientific way. So, uh, like that, any uh, the believer, among them, including Buddhist, you see, should pay more attention for study, study. And instead of sort of a faith, yes, yes, not instead of that, uh, you, you must develop the logical approach. Even Buddha's own words come, we should express why, why he said that. So not yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So Buddha himself, as I uh, mentioned earlier, so uh, Buddhist and particularly knowledge tradition, we must also to develop question mark why why why, and then further investigation. So some Nalanda master even rejected some Buddha's own teaching. If we accept particular Buddha's teaching, uh, it goes against the reason. So we reject Buddha's own word. Buddha taught that for particular audiences, not genuine his teaching. So many Nalanda master rejected Buddha's own teaching. So now many information about mind, about psychology, about logic, about philosophy, similar quantum physics. Now these quite useful, these original source, Buddhist sort of literature. But we should take these as an academic subject, not a religious subject. So then we can use, you see, this knowledge for sort of further development of our brain and including physical health and world peace, individual peaceful mind, and through that way, peaceful society, and finally, peaceful world. Mainly, academic, uh, academic way, not religion, not talking about next life, not talking about nirvana, moksha. <laughs> okay. Your Holiness, we have two questions on sadhana or practice. 
Uh, one is from Adarsh uh, in Dwarka. The question is, how can a person make his or her life compassionate and the mind stable? And the second question is similar. How can we develop and stabilize loving energy? Kasa. Hmm? According to my own experience, uh, these subjects uh, are not all the certain come my mind. No, from childhood, uh, I think six, seven years old, I already start a lesson. Lessons were study. So when I start to study, you see, this uh, lesson, I have no interest. I was rather lazy. My only interest is play, 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 run here and there like that. Oh. Then gradually, I develop genuine interest. And my life become more complicated, more difficult. Then this text really very, very helpful. So now over 70 years, or six, 60, 70 years, I really sort of oh, kind of combine my life with this idea which we study. So very, very useful. So not easy. Uh, my case, as I mentioned earlier, at least 60, 70 years I practice. So the result really immense effect in my mind. When my life passing through difficult, so I can keep peace of mind. So altruistic sort of practice. Uh, through that practice, you see, the whole universe appears something very positive. Too much negative emotion, self-centered, selfish, then suspicion, anxiety, like that. Through that way, the whole world appears something negative. So ultimately, depend on your warm-heartedness, not through faith, but through reasoning. Analyze and with uh, help of scientific findings. And very good. So, not easy. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you see, a few decades I practiced these things. Hmm. Your Holiness, we have uh, three questions which hmm? are related. One is from Mr. Matthew Cherian of Help Page India. He says, he asks, how do you remain happy and smiling at all times? Is it only to be with the highly exalted people? That's one question. Oh. Another question is, uh, can you please yes. share okay. with... Sorry. I have some special pill. <laughs> uh, that brings smile. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier. You see, I think firstly, the, your enemy, troublemaker, criticizing you, you consider best teacher. Then you see no basis for, for anger or jealousy. Then some people more success. Then, oh, very good. No jealousy. So, like now Chinese, you see, criticize me, I feel... Uh, Sometimes more concerned about their anger, you see, their fear. You see, never feel anger like that. So therefore, you see, uh, and then I think first, basically, I think a Tibetan, generally speaking, quite because of the joyful way. Joyful, joyful, I think. Uh, then those people who from Himalayan area also you see more generally you see same Tibetan culture 
isn't it? <laughs> so that's, I think, uh, due to Buddhism, you see, since from childhood, we always hear mother sentient being, entire sentient being, consider as dear as your mother, mother sentient being. So from childhood, you see, this knowledge very familiar in our mind. And then gradually practice, uh, uh, you gain more experiences. So therefore, uh, my own case, uh, as basis is, I, I, as I mentioned earlier, mother sentient being. Then thinking this, then I always see, think at least oneness of seven billion human beings. So wherever I go, I always just feel same human being, same human brother, sisters, you know. So daily, uh, when I, 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 I wake up quite early, uh, 3.30 usually. Mm. Then uh, come out after my bath, because of the bath, bath shower, and then go outside my room. And then, you see, uh, first sort of people are police. Uh, so I, I usually, whenever I met police, I do this. And then shake hand. Uh, then is I teasing them. So, so, so long, human face there, no need so to uh, introduce or not important rank, just a human being. I believe strongly oneness of seven billion human beings. With that, wherever I uh, go or whenever uh, I meet some people, I feel we are the same, human brothers, sisters. And I teasing uh, like that. And some, some police are uh, more serious. So then, uh, firstly, I smile. And then their response still more serious. Then I do this. <laughs> <laughs> then they smile. <laughs> like that. So, whenever I meet people, no barrier. We are saying. If I consider I'm Tibetan, I'm Buddhist, and particularly I'm His Holiness Dalai Lama, then too much thinking that way, I myself isolate, lonely person, foolish. Much better think I'm just a human being. So meet another human being, then smile. Uh, Your Holiness, this question is from Gautam and Brignya. And the question is, can you please share with us the ethics of living as a couple? The ethics of hmm? living as a couple. I think both have responsibility. Uh, so firstly, uh, sometimes I think in California, one uh, Christian was a teacher. He usually, you see, helping oh, marriage. Oh. He asked me. Uh, then I told, we, we, we discussed uh, the marriage should not take hurriedly. Better know each other, not only attraction from face, but deeper nature of the other. Then, uh, once you know not only physical beauty, but deeper level of the person. Uh, you develop, both sides develop some kind of trust or deeper respect, then marry. So, we agree that. So, so like that. And then, the, the inner value is more important and then out of beauty, out of beauty, out of beauty, 
you can this is you can make some artificial <laughs> and inside full of anger then no use your holiness uh, now there are some questions which are uh, slightly more provocative or even political this question is despite your presence in india for 60 years why has the education of dharma culture and philosophy gone down in this country kaise hua i think you see they degenerate i think buddha dharma uh, and all i think teaching uh, they mainly you see pay attention about ritual and some temple so in dharmsala area lot of temple of hanuman i don't think hanuman they have certain power <laughs> to protect you or to protect india i don't think sometimes i feel <coughs> population of monkey now increasing in some area in damsala area also this suppose soldier of or kasada hanuman so sometimes they quite so sort of disturbances or uh, take a flower or some other things like that so so india i think general speaking not pay much attention about the real meaning of dharma but still however at the ahimsa uh, and karuna i think become part of indian culture so therefore religious harmony and comparatively peaceful society i think 1000 year old indian tradition ahimsa really you see impact india's masses so then religious people i think should pay more attention for study Oh, not just sort of recite some mantra or some prayer. Uh, is just if it's a part of the practice. Real practice is transform of emotion. That's real practice. Okay. Uh, Your Holiness, we do not have cordless mics for the audience. So, uh, how many more questions can we have? one or two more questions yes yes okay uh, here's a question uh, there are a lot of questions about the uh, state of the world we live in today you know what is happening to the world why is there so much violence so i can sum them up with this one question where is our world headed to is there hope for durable world peace and this is from uh, a lady from the Germ- uh, mr i think mark messenger from the german school hmm huh? i always say uh, feel the existing education on modern world i think modern education uh, developed in western world so the at the beginning the separate education institution started i think at that time it is quite balance uh, faith in a value is concerned um, monastery and nunnery they take care and then eventually after sort of industrialization then they uh, need separate education institution then they develop this institution then they are mainly focusing about uh, material development and science and technology so then uh since the very education is very much oriented about material value i think that's a mistake uh 
So education, uh, not as a religious sort of uh, education, but as I mentioned earlier, about the psychology, about uh, peace of mind. This, as an academic subject, should include in our education field. Then, after, you see, I think uh, uh, 20, 30 years, generation who come through that kind of education, I think, I'm quite sure, different sort of kind of people. Existing education, just talking material, not talking about, uh, in this case, in, in here in India, they accept your part of your culture, ahimsa, through education, no particular sort of or say the emphasis on these things. That's, I think, a mistake. So India needs some kind of revolution about our education system, I feel. My latest commitment is try to revive in education field this ancient, as I already mentioned, India can combine ancient knowledge about mind, ahimsa, Karuna, and then modern education combine, combination. Then these uh, mental quality should not uh, consider as a religious subject, but academic subject. Then? Uh, Your Holiness, there are uh, two or three questions about religion. Hmm? And about religion, and religion. why is religion causing disharmony in the world and violence? I think, you see, the, I respect this all religion because I fully committed promotion of religious harmony. And one example, India, religious harmony there, over a thousand years. So therefore, the over billion populated nation, religious harmony kept over a thousand years. So therefore, now I think the, the society where different religious traditions already there, then you see the people already have this sort of the concept of several religions. Then those country where only one religion, then their mind is just one religion and one truth. In the society, we need a concept of several truths, several religions. So like India, I think from childhood, they already know several truths, several religions, okay. The some area, like some Muslim area, one truth, one religion. That's only Muslim. So historically, also, you see, uh, when uh, Muhammad and his son and some of his relatives, you see, already, you see, uh, start some fighting and using sword. So now, uh, Muslim, same Muslim in this country, because from their childhood, they already have the several truths, several religions. So therefore, in this country, I never heard problem between Sunni and Shia. There's some Muslim country, simply isolated, so just one truth, one religion, then this conflict is happen. So, more wider contract, then these things will change. I feel that. Uh, Your Holiness, last question from Priya Man. How does one live a good life? Because a good life. I think, besides talking brain, and good food, good clothes, and good sleep. And then, uh, 
Oh, oh, yes, so then good companion. Okay. <laughs> so, but we have this special brain. Oh, simply as a physical comfort, not sufficient. This sophisticated human brain. So, for that, you see, knowledge, as I already mentioned, you see, how to bring inner peace. And when uh, destructive emotion come, how to tackle, how to tackle. These are ancient Indian knowledge, not just to pray to God, but uh, sort of what's the self-discipline, the way, uh, and training. So you Indian, modern Indian, now should pay more attention about ancient Indian knowledge. It's not sufficient just to say ahimsa, ahimsa, uh, and karuna. More for of study about the whole system of our emotion. Now here, quantum physics is also very, very helpful, like that. Okay. Th thank you, Your Holiness. I just want to read out two comments. They're not questions. The first is, thank you for answering my question before I could ask it. And another comment uh, from somebody called Warsaw. Only one word I know that has no match, love. I love you from here to eternity, forever. Keep well, keep warm. That's a message for you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. One lady. Yes. What happened? My love, my love and all our love. This is all I can give you. Love, love, love. I think it's the best word in the whole world. This is my king. And Warsaw, by the way, is a city. It's the capital of a country called Poland. Of course. Thank we were just you, there. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you very much. I'm stupid, I know. No, but I no. love you so much and my friends here. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So basically, uh, okay. may I? Uh, yeah, okay. So basically, you see, altruism is beside a secular way, beside religion. Altruism is a source of happy life and very fit human society. Then, uh, according Indian tradition, we also. Uh, have the idea of life after life, no beginning. You call Atma. Uh, we call subtle level of consciousness, no beginning. Any consciousness as a sort of uh, I'll say the product of cause and condition. So there must be continuation. Without that, you cannot sort of develop consciousness. The material matter never become continuation. Substantial cause. Substantial cause. Similarly, particle, it is substantial cause, must be particle. So consciousness must be same nature in order to uh, carry because of substantial cause, like that. So therefore, then particle also, you see, the whole galaxies come from particle. So uh, when uh, galaxies not yet develop, the empty space we call uh, part, because of space particle, already there. So go that go that way. So similarly, consciousness also is the same sort of because of the substantial cause must be same nature. So therefore, uh, 
the the moment concept conceptual take place the consciousness there so there must be previous so continuation of consciousness now that uh, we can some cases i sort of ask some scientist uh, the cause of conception right uh, time, of uh, time of conception the the mother's egg and the father's semen uh, both no cause of no damage ka no defect ra oh and concept uh is it sort of show that just concept take life or not the some scientists say uh that's not show concept take because of the concept cause of the meeting uh the eggs and semen not necessarily bring life so that shows there must be a third factor now what is third factor the science not yet sort of uh, carry uh, research but we say because there is continuation of life so then due to karma the parent the the uh, male the female you see going to have karmic link become father and mother then that subtle consciousness enter uh, on that conception then life start so that subtle consciousness as i mentioned earlier is the uh, no beginning external matters also no beginning no end similarly consciousness also no, no beginning no end that's the basis is it the concept of rebirth without sarvasthe so uh, so the uh, idea of uh, atma atma you see uh, there are cases who remember past life so therefore no uh, there must be something then this physical and with this physical this mind is something new after conception so then the self must be completely independent from this body and mind that call atma so now buddhist uh you point uh without that kind of concept the subtle mind no beginning no end so that's the basis of rebirth like that so ancient indian uh school of thought is a lot of debate whether there is atma or not and then when we describe uh, self and then you say what is self you know the i think the other day also i mentioned one so one one occasion some audience a one old lady she uh, asked me her mind too much sort of stress too much problem so then i asked her where is i where is you where is yourself and she says yeah then then what kind of shape round or square and she says round <laughs> the buddhist also you see a uh, lot of investigation the very self what is self so then uh, basically you see self is just a mere disconnected so everything dependent not absolute so one unique buddhist school of thought as 
put it to some part. Everything interdependent, interconnected, no independent existence. This Nagarjuna's. Now, quantum physics also, you see, very helpful like that. Okay. Thank you.